everybody, it's Linda. Welcome back to Tips For You. Well, in today's video, I want to talk to you about derma rolling. It's also called microneedling, and it's very popular right now. And it's when you use a little device that has needles on it, you roll your skin with it, and it basically injures your skin with these little needle pricks, and then your body goes to repair it, and when it does, it produces a lot more collagen and growth factor, and that's supposed to help the skin get smoother and fade dark spots and help fade scarring. Many of you have asked me my opinion on derma rolling and asked me if I use it and what I think about it. And I'm going to share that with you in this video. And then later in this video, I'm going to share with you, if you don't want to do derma rolling, something that you can do that is really so simple and so easy and will give you amazing effects on your skin as far as anti-aging and speeding up your collagen production. So stay tuned for that a little later in the video. But first let me talk about the derma roller. Um, it's very popular. You, you can't miss it on YouTube. So many beauty gurus are talking about it and swearing by it and using it and it's everywhere and it's being written about. And so when I see things like that, where everybody's jumping on the bandwagon, I'm always cautious to proceed, especially when it comes to something that is actually going to injure my skin in order to help rejuvenate my skin, because that's what it essentially does. And your body, because it is so careful not to allow bacteria and germs and things to get into your skin, wants to keep you protected so it goes quickly to repair that area and in doing so it generates a lot of blood uh, circulation and collagen production and all the things that you need to build beautiful skin but i was cautious about it because of course you are injuring so i i went to look into it and what i found were things that i was not comfortable with i'm going to share them with you because i think you should know about them I don't think you should blindly use it just because you think it's going to be a wonderful thing without knowing the downside and the risks. So as I said to you, it does um, injure the skin. So this is what it looks like if you're not familiar with a derma roller. And it's got these little tiny needles on it. Um, and as you roll it on your skin, it's going to make little tracks in your skin, little holes in your skin. Now they say that those holes will heal and close up within 60 to 90 minutes so you don't have to worry after that about um, getting infections etc but we're all different aren't we we're all very unique we don't all heal at the same rate perhaps somebody that's very young will heal at that rate but what about if you're over 50 and your healing rate starts to slow down as you get older you have to think twice about what you're doing because you've got to allow more time I would say double the time if not more because you want to make sure that that skin is healed. Now not only that but when you derma roll anything that you place on your skin or that is on your skin before you derma roll can get forced into those little holes and can either cause dermatitis, allergic reactions or even infection. We all carry bacteria on our skin it's part of the skin's natural flora, and among those bacteria can reside ones that can cause serious infection if they are forced into the skin. Bacteria like staph and strep, and damaged skin has been found to be more frequently colonized by staph and more likely to be antibiotic resistant. There is a rare and very serious bacteria that you can get from any small wound like those made by microneedles, where bacteria can enter into the skin and cause an infection that affects the tissue beneath the skin and surrounding muscles and organs, or the fascia. And it's called necrotizing fasciitis, sometimes called the flesh-eating disease. I could not show you photos because they are just entirely too upsetting to look at. But skin experts warn that necrotizing fasciitis can start from a very minor injury to the skin, like those made by microneedling. Symptoms get worse very quickly and can be extremely life-threatening if not recognized and treated right away. My husband had cellulitis, which was caused by microscopic bacteria that entered his skin. It's a very serious, life-threatening infection, 
and it's another thing for you to be concerned about if you're going to do microneedling. And there's something that I came across that has been happening, but it's underreported, so be aware that it's probably worse than we are seeing as more and more people are adopting this do-it-yourself behavior at home. And it's something called granulomas. Granulomas are forming on the skin of people who use these derma rollers. And what granulomas are, are these little um, bumps, almost like a rash, that forms on the skin after a person has been using a derma roller or goes for a derma roller treatment at a spa. Okay, they're taking the precautions necessary with, uh, you know, the usual um, procedures of disinfecting as well as making sure the needles are clean, but this is something that's going on with the person's body. It's either the chemical agents that are placed on the skin before the derma rolling, i.e. vitamin C, vitamin E, hyaluronic acid, something like that, or it's being done, it's happening after. It can also happen just because of the derma roller itself. The derma roller needles can have silicone on them and that silicone can get trapped inside your skin and that can result in you developing granulomas. This is something similar that they see with people who get lip injections or fillers or even breast implants. Okay, your body puts out an immune response rejecting this type of a thing and it causes a tremendous amount of inflammation and rash all in the areas where these derma rollers have been used. The treatment to get rid of something like that can be very extensive and can include antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, uh, steroids. It's not something that's taken care of and dealt with in a very short and rapid way. And you should know that sometimes, despite lengthy treatment, some people are left with permanent granulomas. So what you have to keep in mind is anything that you're putting on your face um, before the treatment or after the treatment has a direct channel of entry right into your body, okay? And everybody's skin is different. As you get older, your skin gets thinner. Some people have capillaries and blood vessels very close to the skin. Some people suffer from rosacea. They say if you have rosacea, um, this can make it worse. You can have flare-ups. You can even develop rosacea this way. You can even be prone to rosacea and not even know it and then go to use a derma roller and then you've triggered it. The same goes with the herpes um, infection. Many people are infected with the herpes virus and don't even know it. And when they go to do something like this, especially around the mouth, they can activate nerve fibers and certain situations can cause the herpes virus to be triggered. Um, I actually watched a woman on YouTube literally rolling her lips and all around her lips and her lips over and over again. That is something I would never do. The skin on your lips is very thin and very sensitive. It's considered a mucous membrane. You can easily force any kind of bacteria or fungus, anything into your mouth, into your lips. It's a very delicate area. And I was like astonished watching her do it. I would never do it. Um, you have to really use some common sense. Some of these allergic reactions were produced 96 hours after treatment at a spa with this microneedling device. So it can take some time for your body to actually build up some kind of an immune response. And it balloons in some people into a big systemic problem where joints get swollen, they're retaining fluids. So it's not just the little irritation you might see in the dry skin and the peeling. I mean, that's all, you know, expected and common and that's no big deal. Um, you should know that if you're going to use a derma roller, you may be subjecting yourself to an increased risk of having melasma, which is those brown spots that you can get. Um, somehow, when you trigger your immune response or your skin's ability to rejuvenate, you can upset the melanocyte cells inside and you can result in having more brown patches. This is um, especially common with people who have darker skin. After you do derma rolling, you have to protect your skin. 
You have to avoid the sunshine. You have to wear sunscreens. You have to be careful of what you put on your face. And it just does not really line up for my lifestyle. I like to spend time outdoors. I like to go walking. Um, I do wear sunscreen, but I don't want the sunscreen getting any further into my body than just the top of my skin, okay? I don't want to be, you know, penetrating sunscreen or foundation or bronzer or anything else deep into my skin layers. Your skin works really hard to provide a barrier to the world to protect you on the inside from any kind of pathogen, from dust, from things that are going to get in your pores and cause problems. And it builds up a thick, horny layer of dead skin cells to do that. And when you go tracking across it with needles and breaking it up and breaking up those fibers, you are leaving that skin layer susceptible to something getting into that area. Now, you also have to think about any other systemic or health issues that you might have. Are you somebody who does surf, suffer from allergies or autoimmune issues or have you are you on certain medications? Do you use Retin-A? It's contraindicated for people who use Retin-A. You shouldn't be doing uh, derma rolling. Yet many of these beauty gurus are also the ones who are supporting the use of Retin-A and saying that they also use the derma roller. Well, I think by now you all know how I feel about Retin-A. I do not recommend it as a anti-aging beauty treatment for the skin. And I personally am not recommending using a derma roller either. I don't think because of the downside risk um, that it is something that I'm willing to gamble with. I always ask myself, could I after this treatment be worse off than I am right now. And if the possibility exists, especially if the cure could be extensive and can be a real problem for my body, then I'm going to pass on it. There are so many other beneficial beauty things that you can do to help your skin uh, rejuvenate, to um, help with anti-aging, to fortify your skin, I, I personally have the belief that the more gentler you treat your skin, the more beautiful it's going to look as you age. Being harsh with your skin, subjecting it to harsh elements, to smoke, to alcohol, uh, to too much sun, to things like that, it's only going to age it faster. Having a healthy diet and avoiding things in the environment that are going to affect the aging of your skin um, can really help you stay youthful. I want to share with you a little secret. If you want your skin to rejuvenate faster, all you have to do is exfoliate. And it's as simple as a wet washcloth and rubbing your face. You can use a little firmness if you want, where you feel your skin is getting a little red and tingly, but don't overdo it. Don't injure yourself. Be very careful around your eyes, okay? and around the upper lip area because it's very easy for you to injure that area. You don't want to do that. You just want to slough off some of the dead skin cells there and your body knows exactly how much you're taking off and it knows it's got to go replace it. So it immediately gets busy replacing that skin cell layer and when it does that it does call upon your growth factors and your hormones and your collagen and your elastin fibers and they all get to work to build back up that layer of skin, that dead skin cell layer, that horny layer that they call it. Because it's vital for you. It's vital for protection against the environment. Um, it, everything that your body does is done for a reason. Okay, so you have to be really careful what you choose. You don't want to disrupt things. You know, being in a constant state of inflammation, like people that use Retin-A, is really harmful for your skin and it puts your body through a lot of extra work that is not necessary. Some precautions that you should take to prevent premature aging of the skin when you exfoliate is to exfoliate only at night. This way you're not going right out into the sunshine. And only exfoliate when you don't have any irritation active on your skin like acne or any rashes. And finally, you want to block the sun from your skin for the next few days. The best is to use a physical block like a hat or a sun block.
which is better than a sunscreen. How often should you exfoliate? Well, that all depends on your age. If you're under age 40, you can exfoliate once a week. If you're age 40 to age 50, you can exfoliate once every other week. And if you're over 50, once a month will be sufficient. Remember, you know your skin best. You may have to do it less if you have dry skin than someone that has oily skin. Just let your skin be your guide. So you might be wondering, does this device even work? Does it really help to rejuvenate the skin? Well, it's very hard to say. There are testimonials all over the internet. Countless YouTube beauty gurus and beauty bloggers promoting its use in order to lead you to believe that it does work. However, I suspect that this is all done in an effort to sell derma rollers or the lotions and serums that are used in conjunction with them. There are certainly people who have claimed that derma rolling did nothing for their skin, despite repeated use, and even expressed concern that they thought the quality of their skin had deteriorated from using it. However, it would seem that their opinions are drowned out by those on the bandwagon. All we really know for sure is that microneedling with a derma roller injures the skin, triggering a chain of events inside your body to repair the damage. And any results that are promised are said to take as long as a year or more and require several treatments. Treatments that have been known to carry risks and side effects. So I'll let you decide. And here's a list of contraindications that you should be aware of that they recommend that you not do microneedling or derma rolling if you have any of these uh, types of conditions. And they are pretty extensive. Do not use a derma roller or microneedle if you have an active acne infection, a sunburn, diabetes, a bleeding disorder, or you take blood thinners. If you're prone to keloid scarring, have an active infection, smoke, have sensitive or impaired skin, or take oral Accutane. And as I mentioned earlier, you should not do it if you use Retin-A, have eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, or rosacea, or if you have very dark skin, or if you have an autoimmune problem of the skin, such as lupus. If you've had a chemical or laser peel, if you're pregnant, have had radiation therapy, have open wounds, if you have herpes, if you have warts, if you have skin cancer, and if you have thin skin from steroid use. So as I mentioned, microneedling can cause bruising, bleeding, infection, scarring, and pigment problems. Many of the devices sold online are not of surgical grade. And studies have shown that the needles can cause tiny tears in the skin rather than finely controlled injuries that trigger healthy healing. And there is also the risk of flimsy needles breaking off and getting embedded into the skin. Major risk for scarring and infection. The FDA is expected to soon regulate at-home microneedling devices to protect the consumer. So after doing a little bit of research and looking into it, it is not for me. And I don't recommend it because I don't use it. And I really don't recommend anything to you guys that I don't use myself. Um, because uh, you guys are like family to me and I treat you that way. So I am not going to promote something that I really don't believe in. And I don't believe in the derma roller. And if you do want a micro needling treatment, I would ask your dermatologist first about your skin because you may have conditions with your skin that you are not aware of um, or trigger conditions with your skin or with your health um, that you don't even see coming with a simple, something as simple as rolling this thing on your face and you never thought it could happen and then you find yourself you know, in the doctor's office uh, getting all kinds of tests because, you know, you're covered with, you know, red uh, uh, bumps all over your skin. People have also gone to dermatologists and spas and people who are experienced with microneedling and had bad experiences, okay? We are all unique. And when they say there are side effects of things and you always think, okay, that's not going to happen to me, well, 
it can. It happens to more people than you think. You sometimes don't hear about it, but it does. Um, some people develop literally every single side effect with a drug. It always depends on you as a person. So, don't be so quick to follow the crowd. I hope that you found my video helpful. Uh, with you know sharing my perspective helped you think about it maybe you're on the fence about it maybe you want to try it but you're you're hesitant and this will help you and now I'd like to share some final thoughts with you to offer you some food for thought many lotions and serums contain a lot of chemicals read the bottles there are ingredients in serums and creams that are not even listed on the bottle, okay? Preservatives and things they don't even list that you and I will never know about. And when you read the packaging or the bottle of something and you see all the ingredients um, and all the chemicals, uh, do you want that shoved into your skin? It's possible that you're going to do, pro you're going to, you know, there are going to be problems there. Has our sense of risk been morphed by the desire to look like a beauty clone? What happened to being yourself? I think we've all gotten like way too comfortable with, you know, injecting our faces that we're it's, we're looking at it like it's no big deal like, you know, rolling your face with needles is is we're also used to these cosmeceutical treatments, fillers, botox, you know, lip fillers, all kinds of things that we're, you know, pe women are doing to their faces now that's so mainstream that it's like if you don't do it, you're the one that's odd, right? I don't think so. I look at some of these women and I think personally that they would look nicer without it. Okay, so that's food for thought for you. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know below um, in the comments and also give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe because I have a lot more to come, something of interest to everyone. And please visit me at my blog spot where I do a lot of writing and I'm also on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram so we can stay connected there as well. Okay, well thanks so much for viewing. I really appreciate your time. Bye-bye now.